All right, we're ready to get started here this morning. Uh, we've got a ditch dug down through here. Guys, whether you can tell it or not, the greenhouse is built on a hillside. So we're trying to prevent water from coming into the greenhouse from up the steep hill. Uh, all of our land's on a hillside. We don't have anything level. So I've dug this ditch. I've got a line pulled, a level line. We're going to be using two by 10 treated boards to go down here. They're gonna be protruding up out of the ground so that when water comes down the hill, it hits it and it doesn't just keep coming through the greenhouse. So right now we're temporarily installing them until we get the pipes driven in the ground. This will give us a way to mark where the pipes go and give us a, a kind of a straight edge to go by when we drive these pipes down in the ground. So this is kind of like a, a form board for the greenhouse. Now we will be doing some things on the inside of the greenhouse is the reason we need these two batons there. And you'll see that once we get into the more complicated build of the greenhouse. All right, we're over to the other side of the greenhouse now. It's a little bit different situation over here. We've had to add some dirt to be able to get it level. And yes, the wind is blowing, so don't. Uh, but what we're going to do is we want most of our row cover to hang down the hill rather than up inside the greenhouse because we have material coming to cover the greenhouse floor with. This is basically to keep this hillside from washing off. So I'm going to take my torch and I'm going to burn a hole on the one foot side here so that we can slide it over this stake and the rest of it, two foot of it will hang down the hill. One foot of it will be up inside the greenhouse bottom, which we will later fold up against the boards that we're going to put on this side here.
Okay, we're going to go to the other end. We're going to do exactly the same thing. All right, so we're getting it straight. Had to have a break for a minute to go get a delivery. And he's gonna be he's putting the stakes down to hold it, the staples, and he's gonna lay some boards on it until it kind of contours with the land. And that's what this side's gonna look like. I got here working on the greenhouse. We haven't got our frame in yet. It's supposed to come in sometime this week. Before it gets here, our greenhouse is going to have a bed down each side of it two foot wide and because our contour of our land is on a hillside we are going to go ahead on this uh, east side of the greenhouse and we're going to go ahead and build the raised bed before the greenhouse gets here because it's up high we're going to use this board as a reference board for driving our steel pipes in the ground and and the height of the steel pipes we want and everything they will be inside the raised bed, which is not a problem. But if we go ahead uh, today, we're going to try to start putting this board like this right here over here on this side. The first thing we'll do is we'll drive our stakes everywhere except where the joints are at. Now, these stakes are basically, I guess you could say they're kind of like temporary because once we get the greenhouse built, we're going to come back and put permanent stakes in it once we know that we have everything just the way we want it because uh, there's, there should be some pieces of pipe left over from the greenhouse and if there is we will come back inside here and we will drive some of those pieces of pipe down and we will drill them and put carriage bolts in them and that way we know that our bed is secure and we don't have to worry about it moving so that's the phase we're at on the greenhouse today is getting the east side raised bed built. Now we don't have to do it on the west side because the, our contour of our land is on a slope like this and what we did was cut into the hillside and cut up where the raised bed was going to be at here so we didn't have to bring in all this dirt and fill it in. We're going to do this ahead of time. Uh, we've learned some lessons from watching different channels and stuff that it's best to go ahead and fill these beds before we actually put the greenhouse up while we can get the tractor in and out of here to do the work for us rather than having to tote everything in. So that's our plans. The plan here is to drive these stakes down level with the top of the string because then like, when we put the boards up, we'll know the height to bring the boards up to put the screws in them uh, to these stakes.
All right, we're back out another morning, trying to stay in between the rains, guy. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm headed to the compost pile now. We're gonna be getting our black composted dirt. We're gonna be filling this thing up with dirt. We're going to start on the other end with some asparagus that we got from Grower Solution and trying to get our asparagus in the ground during all this rain and everything. We're back right here. We've got a lot of our topsoil put in. You don't want to fill your bed to the top when you're planting asparagus because you need to be able to have it down in the ground. And there's no sense in me filling it up and having to just dig a ditch. So we figured we'll leave it low. We'll put our asparagus in it and then we'll spread the roots out and then we'll cover it up with topsoil. But before you do that, when you get your asparagus in, you really need to let them soak for about 10 to 15 minutes in a bucket of water. When we have these here from Grower Solutions, that we've been letting uh, soak here in the water. Kind of rehydrates the roots before you put them in the ground. Some of them are actually trying to start growing here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can't get these in. And what you wanna do when you put them in the ground, you wanna be able to spread their roots out on the ground rather than just wadding them up in a tight wad. Kind of spread them out. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put some dirt over them once we get them laid out. Now we're gonna try to do two rows of them here about 10 inches apart. This is in the greenhouse because we have problems with the little furry friends, uh, bunny rabbits, and when this stuff starts coming up, they like it as much as we like it. So we're thinking if we can put this on the eastern side of our greenhouse, then it'll get the morning sun when it first comes up, and then the rest of the day, most of it probably will be shaded by other things that's in the greenhouse and it won't get too hot, and who knows? We may even be able to eat asparagus year-round. This is an experiment in the greenhouse here. Because I've got this sneaky suspicion if it's positioned in the right place, it could really be a beneficial food source because wherever we put it at right here, it's permanent. This stuff can last up to 30 years before you have to do anything to it. So uh, we're not worried about it spreading out of control because it's in a controlled bed here. And it's going to be a wonderful food source, I'm thinking, for Deep South in the future. Now, I don't actually know how what year old crown this is. I don't know if this is a one or a two year old crown, but we'll be able to tell whenever we start uh, to see them pop up. If they're little skinny, tiny shoots, we usually know it's a first year crown and we'll just let it go to a fern-like plant and put all this energy back into the roots. Uh, probably won't harvest anything this first year. Just let it all go to ferns. And then we'll, uh, next year, we'll be able to tell if we should take just a few or if it needs to go another year. So asparagus is one of those kind of plants, guys, that you have to plant it way ahead of time. You don't plant it and get an immediate harvest. All right, we've got 18 asparaguses put in a particular section here. Uh, we think that that'll be plenty as an experiment here. We're gonna take the others that we have left over that we bought from Grower Solutions. 
we're going to take them over to the cabin because you know what? We want a asparagus garden over there also. So we're going to divide it up between the two and we'll be able to see which one does the best in the future. You know, if this thing proves not to work in here at all, then we can dig these up and move them over to the cabin. But if these seem like they're doing exceptionally well, then we'll just call Grower Solutions and order some more and we'll add some more in here. But right now, it's time to cover them up. We're going to put about six inches of dirt on top of them because the deeper the asparagus are in the ground, the better they perform. And we're using our homemade dirt from here at uh, Deep South Homestead. Matter of fact, this is the very dirt we dug out of the greenhouse right here. Okay, we've got it about two inches from the top now. We're going to let it rain on this and settle it down. And then we're going to come back and we're going to put more dirt on top of it. Because uh, right now we've got a lot of rain predicted to come. And we don't want to get it, uh, the asparagus just packed down hard. So we would rather put uh, about two inches on top of it. And then come back and put the other two to three inches on it after the rain. So that we make sure we keep a good loose top. And I believe we're gonna move down to the other end of the bed down here. We've got strawberry plants that are gonna go on the other side of the greenhouse, but that's gonna be like a week or two away. And these strawberries are already trying to sprout. So I think what we're gonna do is just go down there and just heal them in. That way uh, they'll remain viable until we get ready to move them to this end of the greenhouse. All right, we've got our strawberry plants here. Uh, they come in bundles. These are called the sure crop and they're already starting to uh, sprout pretty good. So rather than leave them in this bag and then run the risk of them just getting messed up, we're going to uh, we're going to take and do what's called healing them in. And that's not anything fancy. I'm going to leave them actually banded together. We're just going to take a place here in the bed. I'm just going to take my shovel and make a hole in the ground. And we're just going to kind of like stick them in there like that. Nothing to it. It keeps the roots damp. It keeps them moist. And it keeps them from trying to rot uh, or dry out too much. Because it can do either. And this bag stays wet with sweat all the time. So if they stay wet all the time, then they could possibly rot in here. But if we put them in the ground, that's Mother Nature's way of taking care of them. We'll just let them acclimate to the soil temperature and everything outside here. And they should do fine until we get ready to get the other side of the greenhouse, get the bed like this built on the other side. Because that's, like I said, like two weeks down the road probably. And we just don't want to lose our strawberry plants because we just bought them, guys. Okay, there we have it. We have them healed in right here in the raised bed. Now, guys, we've worked, uh, done the footwork and everything um, for you guys. All you got to do is check our description down below. There will be a link down there. And in that link, if you go to Grower Solutions, there's a promo code. If you type in that promo code in the correct box, you get an automatic 10% discount on anything you buy from Grower Solutions. And that's a one-time purchase. So make sure whenever you use it that you're purchasing all that you want to purchase so you get a 10% discount right off the bat. That's our gift to y'all through Grower Solutions. And we thank Grower Solutions for working with us on this and helping us to get a promotion for our subscribers so that we can all enjoy the benefits of the greenhouses, the plants, the growing of food and everything in some uncertain times. You can even get uh, trees or Anything else like that from them, uh, ground cover, row covers, whatever you need, uh, irrigation, we've mentioned before. They have several different greenhouse kits you can get, any size that which you might want. 
the greenhouse plastic, stuff like that. They have an assortment of things that can be used to grow your food. So keep them in mind. Use the promo code down below and get the 10% discount, guys. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.